legs might have lost, but wait, come on. Sun shining. You're still breathing. Positive. Come on. Let's be positive. Positive. Just stop right there. Be positive. No negativity. Right. Let's be positive. Be positive. 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 LBP. LBP. Let's be positive. All right, then, to Twizel we go, and he's always positive, and why the hell wouldn't you be living in a cold, windy crap hole like that, Mad Gun? I'm just being mean because oh, we lost, Mark, mate. Come I on, I know. positive oh, today. Okay, all right. Oh, hang on. All right, let's start again. You were living Twizel and you, you were living in Twizel and you had your shorts on over the weekend. How happy were you? Oh, it was just absolutely the best. Saturday, I got up, the sun was already there. And it's been so long since I've got up on a Saturday and the sun's been out. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go outside and test the waters. Go on. And I went outside and it must have been 20 degrees. Yes. You know? And uh, I said, no, shorts. And now I put a little, I put a light hoodie on. You know, not a, not a heavy hoodie, not an Auckland hoodie, but just a light hoodie, thin material hoodie. And after about 20 minutes of working outside, I had to ditch it and I just had a T-shirt and shorts on. And I did try and take a photo for you to prove it was true, but my legs are so white and withered after winter that uh, there's too much glare off the camera, so I couldn't actually okay. get a decent photo. But I can tell you, it's an early spring. Early. Yeah, well, spring officially uh, happens on Thursday, first day of spring. All right, let's get straight into it, mate. Your Wallabies, who picked that? My All Blacks, who picked that? Now, isn't this the kind of thing you wish you were smart enough to get on the TAB mm-hmm. and do a little double? Nobody, nobody would have picked that. And I can tell you right now, I said this a few weeks ago, we've got a World Cup, haven't we? Week in, week out, you're never sure who's going to beat who. Last week was a nice quiet week for the All Blacks. That reappointed the coach. Everyone was back on board. Fozzie was being fully backed by the board. And I just wonder what was happening in the corporate box during that match on Saturday night. Whoa, 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 whoa. What have we done here? It's going to be all on again this week. And it's back. The conversation's back. Uh, who doesn't want him to go now? The fact is, Martin, I don't think it's the coach. I think that all these international rugby teams are just a little bit up and down. I don't think the All Blacks are anywhere near where they have been. I just don't think, as they say, the cattle have the mustard. But that being said, going into this weekend, would you put that same double on? All Blacks to win and South Africa to win? Or would you say, look, we, we, we're not sure about Argentina and the Wallabies again? So the game is actually in a place where we're not judging other teams against the All Blacks anymore because there's no consistency among any of them. Yeah. You just ran through who's won and lost this year. Mate, you know, and look at, since the, the rugby championship has started, every series has been split one all. Australia and Argentina split one all. South Africa and us split one all. Now we play Argentina, and I, and I guess most All Black fans will think we'll win this one, we'll bounce back because our backs are against the wall, which would split it one all. And I agree with you. I expect the South Africans... When's the last time the Springboks lost three in a row? So if they lose to you again, that's the world champions losing three matches in a row, right? So... Yeah, I don't see it happening. No, well, I... You know, I really yeah. feel like... I really feel like they'll be back this weekend. Can but Argentina is that because, do Matt, what they is that did because on the weekend we just, twice we, in a row? The, the, the traditional thing with rugby is you just don't get a lot of shock results. And it's it doesn't matter what level of the sport is, NPC, Super Rugby, Club Rugby in England or France, international rugby, you don't get a lot of shock results. Every now and again, there's a Japan beat South Africa, but it's so rare, isn't it? So here we oh, are it's again. It's a rarity. Yeah, thinking, I mean, yep. England, Australia, they split that. Ireland, flogged by the All Blacks, score-wise in game one, Ireland came back yeah. to beat them. Yeah. I mean, this has been, you know, really uh, quite an interesting rugby season. It's been an interesting year. And I know, like, no one likes to lose, all right, we all like to win, sure. But when you go into watching, especially teams that you're not a member of that country, for example, um, thinking that definitely one team's going to win and they definitely do win, it's certainly not as interesting for the game as having competition on the field. 
I mean, I actually don't remember a year where there's been so many reversed uh, results within seven days. And this year's delivered that. You know, Argentina just put too much pressure on the All Blacks. Kick, 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 kick. And if you can kick, if you can get penalties and kick, you win games. Yeah. They it's a different matches. style, yeah. it's a different thought pattern, but you don't have to score tries if the other team is infringing yes. to shut you down. That's it. Look, and, look, know, and look, let's just, be honest about the All Blacks, mate. I grew, in the game. I grew up with the All Blacks when Grant Fox kicked us to game after game after game. I, you know, you go through the 70s and the 80s, the amount of All Black Test matches won by one point, and we kicked the winning goal. Uh, you know, against, mm. against South Africa in 81 in the Test Series, Huey kicks the winning goal at the very end. You know, don't think that the All Blacks don't do this as well. You know, what <laughs> What we got sucked into on the weekend was a referee for whether he was right or wrong makes no difference because if you don't play to that referee and you don't adapt to that referee, we considered eight penalties in the first half, four of them were kickable. We kept them in the game is what we did. Then we made a mistake, they scored a try for it. Matt, when it got to 1918, when they scored that try, I was sitting there thinking, oh, great, this will be a lot closer than I thought it was because I thought at 15-6 we were going to run away with that game, mate. Yeah, yeah. But it's no. not the case, though. No, it's not the because, case anymore. You know, all these teams are closer. I think they're all closer. Well, I think the playing um, strength is a lot closer is what's happened. You know, you saw Wales win a test exactly. in, in Africa for the yeah. first time. You saw Scotland do it in Argentina for the first time. Our players are... Look, we've been through this before. We went through a whole patch. People, it's, Memories are so short. 98 to 2003. That's one, two, it's about five or six years. We were never the best team in the world for that whole time. We couldn't get over Australia, mate. You know, and at the moment, we're a team of a whole lot of super rah-rah players who aren't actually up to winning test matches. And if, you know, if they were, they would have shut that game down. At 15-6, mate, look, even even at 19-18 to them, we have a chance to score a penalty and go up again, which puts scoreboard pressure on them, which means they've got to come down our end. So what do we do? Dumbly, we kick it for the corner. That's super rugby, mate. It's not how to win a test match. So, but there's enough experience Well, out the there. question is also, Martin, where are those really intelligent top-line players? You know, where's the guy, after you've given away another penalty, that huddles everyone in and says, look, we've got to readjust for the referee. Yeah. And you know Richie McCall was that kind of captain, right? It took him a People while, had but it was, questions yeah. in that mm. period that you just mentioned about Tane Randall's captaincy. You know, would Fitzpatrick have calmed that down? Would John Eels have come into a huddle and calmed that down? Yes. Those questions are really sometimes based against a team that's got a lot of very good players and a couple of super players, but not just physically. You know, the game and all sport relies on people being smarter to get a win. And it's the same in everything. Formula One, the guys who are looking at the monitors, looking at the data, they get race wins. You know, it's not just the driver. The driver's got to be great. But without those guys giving the information that they need about the tactics that are required... Lewis Hamilton would have won, wouldn't have won all these races. And so my question is, is your captain good enough to deliver that information under pressure? And I suppose that question might be able to be asked to nearly all of those nations that we've been talking about. And I said it, I'll say it again, there's a World Cup on next year, and it's actually on. You know, I don't know too many people who will be in their mind right now putting money away to back any one team yet. Let's be positive. Team. Matt Gunn out of Twizel. Your doggies, our Warriors, I love this from the weekend. The Warriors are looking to finish on a high by beating the Titans this coming Saturday. So, Matt, we could win seven games and have lost 17. Now, anyone who thinks that this is a high, obviously you're on drugs because that's the only high that's available for this when you hear a comment like that, right? How can be how can winning seven games out of 17 be any sort of a high? And that is where the Warriors are now, where they are now trying to pollute everyone's mind that this season is actually going to be okay because next season is better. Can you imagine if, if Ian Foster turning around and saying that to All Blacks fans at the moment? Oh, look, you know, we're going to finish on a high. We'll beat Argentina. Next year's World Cup's going to be better. So at the moment, my question yeah. is to you. <laughs> it's Ian Foster's fault when the All Blacks lose. It's not Stacey's fault. It's not Nathan Brown's fault. It's not Kearney's fault ever when the Warriors lose. Right? How does that work? The only good thing I can come up with about the NRL, given that all the sides I like to watch and support will have no part 
in the only important part of the season, yeah. is that it's nearly over, you know. And I've been where the Warriors are now for the last six seasons, <laughs> right? And it's no good. No. There are no positives. No, there's no the high. You don't finish on a high. Is, you lose is that it. You get a break from That's losing it. every week. That's, That's the positive, Mark. That's the positive. That's the only positive. Yeah. And, you know, I love the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. I love the Bulldogs. It is the one club that, even though I question them, I just can't walk away. Other clubs I support, other sports I follow, I could not watch. I can get myself to the point where if we're hopeless, I can say, you know what? Not this week. And year in, year out, and I've spoken to you about this nearly every week for years now, Martin. Week in, week out, we have been where the Warriors fans are. And I can tell you right now, I've never heard our CEO go on like that. And quite frankly, that would almost be enough to turn me off. There is no positives from this season. None. Okay? Zero. Lost good players. We've realised again no one really wants to come to the Warriors. It's extremely difficult to get anyone who's really going to boost the club to come here. Some of the players that came back that the club said would perform and bring them up the ladder have not done so. And even though after three or four weeks they were hanging around the bottom of the top eight, there's hardly been a week since then that you felt like, this is a club on the rise. No. So if it starts no. next year, that said, that will be an absolute miracle. And some genius may jump on at the TAB now and back Cameron George. But quite frankly, that genius won't be me. All right, finally and quickly then, what's happened to Monolith, mate? Because last week you told us that the Monolith was being used simply as a, as a, as a vehicle to access porn by teenagers in the Twizel Town Square. Well, I've got to tell you, Martin, that uh, it was one of the most popular articles in the Twice and Luck <laughs> since I've been running it for three years. I received more feedback on that article than any other article I've written, I think. It was absolutely brilliant. It's working. Oh, it's and working. I, I'm almost disappointed after two years because, you know, I, I, I dubbed it Monolith two years ago. And uh, I'm somewhat disappointed, uh, to be honest that it's now actually a tourist information kiosk. But I did get a scoop today. Yes. I was working at the radio station, Radio Twizel, and a man approached me with a box. I thought, what's this about? Here is a guy who's renovating a house, and he, this, is what, this is what happens when you work for the Twizel Update, the upper echelons of journalism, Martin. Yep. He pulls out a peanut butter sandwich that he found in the wall of his house oh, when he was renovating no. it. no. He says, and it was in perfect condition. I've taken photos of it. You couldn't even tell it had been in a wall for 50 years. He reckons it's 50 years old. He's kept it. He's put it in his shed. The beauty of Twizel's weather, it is so dry that nothing goes off or mouldy. That is the highlight of my week. <laughs> a bloke with a 50-year-old sandwich, eh? That and they say the Warriors have got a good season next year. I've got pictures of a 50-year-old peanut butter sandwich. That is Twizel. And that is the most positive thing that I have heard from that part of the country in years. Matt, thank you as always. Matt Gunn, positive from Twizel every single Monday. 25-2 News Update.